In the poetic work titled The Road Not Taken, Robert Frost skillfully conveyed the predicament of being at a crossroads where two diverging paths beckon. Although both paths appeared appealing, he had to make a definitive choice. Frost wrote, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Underscoring the significance of his chosen path. Akin to this metaphorical juncture, half a century ago, India and China found themselves in a similar situation. Their respective fertility rates, standing at 5.6 and 5.5 children per woman, were closely matched and exceeded the replacement level fertility of 2.1, considered essential for population stability. Moreover, both nations confronted comparable social and developmental challenges as they endeavored to reconstruct their nations following protracted periods of colonial subjugation, imperial subordination, and warfare. However, their trajectories towards population control diverged considerably, shaped by distinct policies and approaches. With India's population now surpassing China's, this development elicits a blend of optimism and concern, necessitating a reflection upon these journeys. This video is presenting the depth study and pertinent insights from these historical pathways to assist societies and policy makers to glean valuable lessons for the present and future. In the light of India's current demographic milestone, it becomes imperative to revisit the past and embrace a discerning analysis of these divergent approaches, thereby facilitating informed decision-making for society and its leaders. India has been implementing its family planning program since 1952, opting for a deliberate and gradual approach. This initiative aimed to offer reproductive health services, provide couples with contraceptive choices, and grant them the freedom to determine the desired number of children. Initially, the strategy did not yield immediate success. The population growth rate actually increased from 21.6% in 1961 to 24.8% in 1971 resulting in a population rise from 439 million to 548 million. This escalation was primarily attributed to improved life expectancy, which rose from 45 to 49 years during that decade. The mounting concern over these burgeoning numbers became palpable. In fact, the frustration was so pronounced that during a state of national emergency imposed by then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1975, numerous civil liberties were suspended and the government resorted to coercive measures, particularly male sterilization. Following the lifting of the emergency in 1977, India reverted to its former path, placing renewed emphasis on the provision of reproductive health and family planning services as a means to achieve population stability. In India's federal structure, individual state governments established their own priorities. Southern states, such as Kerala and Tamil Nadu, prioritized socio-economic development and women's empowerment. India's population growth rate began to decline from 1981, a trend that has persisted. By 1991, the country's total fertility rate had decreased to 4, further dropping to 3.3 by 2001 and 2.5 in 2011. Finally, in 2020, India achieved replacement level fertility, making a significant milestone in its demographic transition. As India celebrated its significant milestone in 2020, China grappled with a distinct population crisis, far removed from the one it faced in the 1970s. China's fertility rate had plummeted well below replacement levels, reaching 1.3, prompting the country to undergo a series of policy reversals in an attempt to increase the birth rate. China found itself confronting the reality of an aging society, a shrinking workforce and a slowing economy. But how did China transition from one extreme to the other? Despite investing significantly in infrastructure and health care since the establishment of Communist China in 1948, the country was determined to swiftly achieve lower fertility rates. In the 1970s, China implemented new age restrictions for marriage, stipulating that women must be at least 23 years old and men 25 years old. Couples in urban areas were encouraged to postpone marriage even further. Consequently, the fertility rate plummeted from 5.5 births per woman in 1971 to 2.7 births in 1979. However, China deemed these measures insufficient. In 1979, the one-child policy was introduced, imposing fines on couples who gave birth to two or more children. 
Furthermore, forced sterilizations and abortions were carried out in an ardent pursuit of lower fertility. Throughout the 1980s, fertility rates fluctuated but generally remained slightly above the replacement level of 2.1 births per woman. Nevertheless, the early 1990s marked a turning point as fertility rates fell below replacement level, and the decline has persisted since then. China has now come to realize the unintended consequences of its previous policies, which has resulted in a skewed sex ratio with more men than women and a rapidly aging population. In 2016, the policy was revised to allow families to have two children, and it was further expanded to three children in 2021. However, the punitive restrictions imposed over several decades have fundamentally disrupted China's demographic landscape making the mitigation and reversal of these effects incredibly challenging. In 2022, China's population experienced its first decline in 60 years, decreasing by nearly a million people. In the common years, India and China will face distinct demographic landscapes with notable implications for their respective futures. China is undergoing a rapid process of aging. The proportion of its population aged 65 and older has nearly doubled since the early 2000s rising from 7% to 13%. The repercussions of China's past restrictive policies are also evident in the severe gender imbalance, with 1,123 male births per 1,000 female births recorded in 2020. Addressing these challenges will require innovative solutions to sustain economic growth and cater to the needs of the elderly. Conversely, India possesses a youthful population, with half of its people below the age of 30 this demographic profile presents significant opportunities for the country. Successive Indian governments have prioritized investments in girls' education and women's social and economic empowerment, taking a developmental approach instead of resorting to coercive measures as seen in China's past policies. India's approach aligns with the principles set forth in the United Nations Organized International Conference on Population and Development held in Cairo in 1994. The conference emphasized investing in people's lives and discouraging coercion as a means to reduce fertility. States like Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Andhra Pradesh in India have successfully achieved low fertility rates early on, serving as examples for others. India has also implemented targeted initiatives in 146 high fertility districts across seven states, encompassing enhanced contraceptive supplies and family planning campaigns. Nonetheless, India still faces unfinished tasks. As its population continues to grow, the large young segment can contribute significantly to the country's economic progress, but requires adequate education and training. India must ensure that its education and skill development programs align with the demands of the job market. The success of India's youth will be pivotal to the nation's overall success. Moreover, India should capitalize on its gender dividend, referring to the economic growth potential derived from increased investments in women and girls. Recent data highlights China's highly skewed sex ratios at birth. In 2020, India observed a sex ratio at birth of 1,079 male births per 1,000 female births. Going forward, India must prioritize gender equality initiatives aimed at transforming patriarchal norms particularly by promoting secondary school education and enhancing female workforce participation. Additionally, India must proactively plan for an aging population, establishing robust social security systems and geriatric care facilities. Lessons from China underscored the importance of an empowerment-based approach to population stabilization, placing the interests of the people at the core of the policies and programs. By recognizing and addressing these demographic realities, both India and China can navigate the challenges and leverage the opportunities presented by their unique population dynamics, shaping their futures in a sustainable and inclusive manner. The population dilemma between India and China has various implications. From an economic standpoint, both countries possess a vast workforce, which can be a source of competitive advantage if harnessed effectively. However, it also possessed challenges in terms of providing employment opportunities and ensuring sustainable economic growth. Additionally, the large populations in both countries put immense pressure on resources, infrastructure, and the environment, leading to concerns about sustainability, urbanization, 
and ecological balance. Large populations create significant demand for resources, including energy, water, and land. As both countries seek to meet the needs of their growing populations, competition for resources may intensify. This can lead to tensions and conflicts, especially in regions where resource scarcity is more pronounced. In such situations, military considerations may come into play to protect strategic resources or secure access to vital supply routes.